Hello and welcome to Tool Hut Channel. Today we have a 2016 Silverado with the big Duramax in it that we're going to put a computer in. Customer has replaced the computer and we're going to program it. Stand by. So to get going here, we're going to be using the GM MDI-2 is our uh, chosen interface for GM programming to program the PCM. And then if you've seen my previous video, you see that we got a new tool. So I'm going to use the new tool for anything that's not programming. So any of the special functions that need to be done to this vehicle, I'm going to use the Top Don uh, RD Pad Pro. I just want to see how it works. We're going to include that in the video. I do have a screen recorder on that. So you're going to see that. The Top Don RD Pad Pro will be available on our website, thetoolhutusa.com. Today, at the date of release of this, it is not on the website, but it is available. If you want one, you can use go to the website and use one of the many links to request more information and send me a email and I will get back with you and how, how to buy one, where to buy one, and how much they are. Also, the MDI-2 is also available on our website. Uh, at the date of release, I do not know that it's on the website either. Uh, it is available from us. So same thing. If you want one, just hit the request more information. Our website is getting ready to go through a major revamp, so I'm not adding or deleting anything off the website currently. So, all right. So we're going to get this thing programmed. The I'm not sh real sure why they're replacing the PCM. I know it's going to come up. I have no idea. The customer brought in a computer from the dealer and requested the shop to install it and have me program it. So that's all I know. I there's a couple things here. I did not follow the uh, GM procedure to transfer the fuel injector flow rate. I wanted to see if the Artipad Pro could do it. And to be honest with you, I just forgot how to that that had to be done on the 16s. I knew it was in there. On the earlier ones, there's actually actually a function in the scanner that you can transfer it from the uh, glow plug module to the PCM. There is not on this 16, so it's a brain fart on my part. So anyway, we're going to use the top down to do the injector programming. So let's get going here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in our top down RD Pad Pro. This is the very first vehicle this vehicle has been plugged into since I've had it. So it does do a firmware update on the VCI. I just thought I would include that in the in the video. No big deal. Just took a few seconds to do here. Maybe a minute altogether. And you can you can see in the background that it's connecting to the VCI. It's installed the firmware successfully. And this is the very, like I say, this is the first vehicle I've plugged into with it. So it reads the VIN of the truck that we're plugged into. It decodes the VIN. I kind of like the way it lays out the identification of the vehicle here. But let's go into diagnosis. That kind of a objective I want to get done here. It's not in-depth diagnosis by any means, but I like using the tool just kind of starting out here. I do choose the chassis control module, my fat fingers, instead of the glow plug module, so we wait for it to load. And we're just going to back right back out of there and go to the glow plug module. Experience has taught me that I want the injector flow rates for the vehicle. I do read the calibration information just for curiosity. Now, I am taking pictures of these injector flow rate identifiers with my phone, uh, just in case I need them later. My experience has taught me that I definitely want these. 
want these numbers. So I have sped up this process. It doesn't take that long to do. Again, all I'm doing is reading the information, taking a picture of it, and going back. All right, so got our numbers. Let's go up to the Glowplug module and read the codes, just because. Like I say, I'm not paid to do a diagnosis on this, so I'm not going to get real involved. But sometimes curiosity kills the cat here. So let's go to the ECM and see what we got for codes in the engine. The customer has put lots of parts on this trying to fix this truck. And the shop did offer to do a diagnosis on it. And the customer declined and brought his new computer from the dealer. It does have a redundant heater 3 control circuit low voltage code and a control module power off time performance code. Uh, it also has a message on the dash, speed limited to 4 miles an hour. Again, we're not getting paid to do a diagnosis on it, so it's just more information. So let's get our ACEDALCO logged into here, get our SPS going. Well, let's get this thing programmed. We know it communicates. The new computer is in it now. The new from the dealer computer is in it. Yes, I did have a brain fart. So all you guys going to tell me that it should still be in at this point. I'm not putting it back in. We're just going to deal with it. So it is a 16 Silverado. Yeah, I got to type in the VIN here. I do speed up this process because I'm sure you don't want to see me do the old search and poke here. And of course, I forgot a letter, so let's get the letter in there. I don't remember what letter I missed, but so we're going to go to the engine control module, and we see where if we choose just the engine control module, it says prepare for removal control module for removal the setup is the paste essentially the the setup remove re prepare the module it copies the injector flow rates and then the setup is the paste so just for information we're not going to use it obviously because the guy that's programming it had a brain fart so got to got engine and transmission control modules they are done at the same time well, not at the same time, but it's part of the same sequence here. So you can't do just one. You have to do both. And so if we just kind of scroll through the calibrations here over on the left-hand side, we'll see on the right-hand side where it says current calibration that there's an asterisk. Now, if we had not chosen the replace and program at the beginning, we would be stuck right here. So we see that the trans has a red square which means that it's not going to do anything to it the calibrations are the latest calibration i have sped up this part of the process might as well just see the blue line go across here let it do its thing I do have a maintainer plugged in, battery maintainer plugged into it. Uh, sometimes I don't on the on the diesels because they got two batteries anyway. But uh, the, this truck was not in the greatest condition, so I didn't want to take a chance on it. So the next thing we have to do is we have to do the immobilizer learn because now it's a no crank. So we're going to go back into our SPS. I shut it off. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that when you type in the VIN and then you do an immobilizer learn, sometimes you have a problem with it. So I always restart my Java. Um, you don't have a problem with it very often, but when you program the quantity of cars that we program, it's just one of the things that I have learned. I'm going to go to the immobilizer learn here. Now there is a special procedure. They kind of changed how they do things here. So we're going to choose the function here for the engine control module, learn. And it gives you a message down at the bottom that this is 
done when you've replaced the engine control module, which the customer has, or we have. So watch the key off and then run. It says not to start the engine because I don't know why it says that because it won't start. So I guess we'll not start the engine then, right? So it is a 12 minute wait instead of our traditional 10 minute wait. I'm going to let it go across here. watching the blue line of death, isn't it? No, I'm not going to bore you with these details. I'll bore you with it for a little bit here, and then we'll then we'll get it going. Make for a long video if you guys had to watch everything going on here, so. All right, I'll pause it. All right, we're down to two minutes. Hey, I'm going to speed up this process. So, yeah, you're going to watch all two minutes of it, but you're going to see it kind of short form here. Let's kind of speed it up there. Uh, kind of interesting because the traditional theft learn once you're done with your 10 minute wait, you're done. That's not so much the case with the newer ones. Once the key off, remove it, open and close the door. We do that. And then at 45 seconds, of course I sped up the 45 seconds as well. So if anybody's keeping track, we're at 12 minutes and 45 seconds. Once the key off, open and close the door again. So there we go. We got the door open and close again. 45 seconds again. That makes it 13 and a half minutes for all you people keeping track. Let's we'll key back on. And it says it was successful. The do vehicle does start with the key now, so we're just going to exit out of this program. All right, so let's get our top down back out. Go back into the diagnosis diagnostics mode. I did just leave it on this screen and plugged in the the DLC or the the VCI. So I did not go tell it to go through a whole identification process again. It didn't seem to care. So I guess it's a good thing. So let's go to the engine control module. First things first. So far, I'm liking this new tool, so. Do our injector flow rate programming here. Let's see what it's got for, for codes. The injector flow rates are all Fs. It's not very helpful, is it? Well, shoot. Let's see if we can, like I said, the older Duramaxes, there used to be a way to copy the information from the glow plug module, because I kind of just kind of screwed around. I did do a reset on the ejector uh, adjustments. That's the adjustments the computer's making. Just because it's a new computer, I'd like to do the reset. All right, I'm going to type in these injector flow rates and get them done. I couldn't find a way to copy and paste them, so we're just going to type them in. Again, I've sped up this process, so you don't have to watch me type, but you kind of get the idea what has to happen here. We could have done this with GDS2, obviously. Uh, I'm trying to get a, a feel for the new tool, what it's capable of doing, what it's not capable of doing, etc., etc. So, 
this is how I learned to use a scan tool. I just use it as my go-to for everything. And we just did them right in order. We could have done them in any order, obviously, but I wanted to do them in order. I wasn't going to bring you along for all eight of them, but I figured I'd just speed up the process so you, you guys could see the, the whole process. Again, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but... That's why we wanted pictures of them, in case we had to type them all. So now all eight of them's done here. Everybody's got the right numbers in them, so we're just going to hit continue. Procedure complete. Uh, let's go back and read the codes in the glow plug module just to make sure we didn't cause any type of problems. Got a mobile laser key not programmed. I uh, don't know that I had done the theft learn at this point. I might have got the videos reversed here, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So now we're going to go into diagnostics again. thing here. So I'm going to do a system scan here. I wanted to see what the difference is with the system scan. I did speed up this process a little bit. Not too bad though. So let's do the health report. We see all the codes we've got in all the different modules. Anytime you program a module, it's not uncommon to cause some codes. So let's look at our fault report, see what it looks like here. We've got a bunch of codes, lost communication with the engine control module. So we're just going to do the big clear, clear them all at once here. That's something that the ITAL does as well, GDS2 does as well. So I'm going to read the codes. Just kind of look at some a couple things here, just real quick, and just seeing what the tools got in it more than anything. I'm just kind of jumping around in here, just trying to see what we got going on. The I did want to do an oil life reset on it. it does not have. Uh, it was not a current oil change, so I did put it to 25%. It had about a thousand, fifteen hundred miles or so, uh, according to the sticker on the windshield. So I just set it for twenty-five percent. It should be pretty close. It does not have any hard codes, which is always a good thing. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more videos like this. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Questions, comments, criticisms, concerns. Have a great day.